here with more reaction to today's hearing, Texas Senator Ted Cruz. Uh, Senator, good to see you. What we've learned is this was all planned, all orchestrated. They had a big call Labor Day. First, they think, thought about walking out. Then they said, we'll do this. Um, I don't think it hurts in any way for the American people to see the left for who they are. Sean, I think that's exactly right. I think yesterday and today were both really good days. They were good days for the country. They were good days for Brett Kavanaugh. Uh, in two days of hearings on the Judiciary Committee, the Democrats have not laid a single glove on Brett Kavanaugh. There's been a lot of screaming. There's been a lot of protesting. There's been a lot of anger. And, and it's really the reflection of the incredible rage and fury we're seeing on the far left. And you're right. By all appearances, these protests are closely coordinated with the Democratic senators. Indeed, yesterday, Senator John Kennedy asked about this conference call between Democratic senators and the protests to disrupt the hearings. And, and Dick Durbin, the Democrat from Illinois, he jumped in and said, yep, we had a conference call. And, and he didn't dispute that it was a coordinated effort. You know, yesterday, 70 people were arrested. But at the end of the day, the rage, the anger they're having, they haven't been able to give even a single argument that is going to derail this not nomination. No Democrat has disputed that Brett Kavanaugh is qualified to serve on the Supreme Court. And they're just really expressing the rage of the far left to Donald Trump. They're mad that Trump won in 2016 and Hillary Clinton lost. And, and, and I think come October, we're going to see Judge Kavanaugh become Justice Kavanaugh. And, and that's a great victory for every one of us who cares about the Constitution and the Bill of Rights and our fundamental liberties. You know, I'm watching, I'm reading the Washington Post tonight and as a result of this, uh, this anonymous, frankly gutless, disloyal New York Times piece. But they're actually talking about the sleeper cells have awoken of the resistance. And I'm thinking there's something extraordinarily dangerous if unelected swamp creatures think that they have the authority to undermine the president from within, um, what if the president's talking about national security? What if he's yeah, talking about yeah. maybe going to war? What if he's talking about intelligence, sources, methods? Yeah. Um, while the media is celebrating tonight, I'm thinking there's a great danger that exists. Well, look, at one level, this is nothing new. With every Republican administration, there are Democrats that are burrowed within the administration that have fought against good and positive policy for the country. At another level, it has been much, much worse under the Trump administration. We've seen the deep state. We've seen Democrats coming out of the Obama administration, deeply politicized, who are fighting the president on every front. You know, you know, in many ways, it's remarkable the victories we've seen. We've seen an historic tax cut, the biggest tax cut in a generation. We've seen regulatory reform, job killing regulations pulled back. We've seen the Obamacare individual mandate repealed. As you know, I led the fight to make that happen in the Senate. Nobody thought we'd get it done. We got it done. And, and we're, 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 we've seen on judges an enormous victory, not only Neil Gorsuch, but we're getting ready to have Brett Kavanaugh. And we've got principled constitutionalists up and down the federal bench. There are people throughout the administration burrowed in that are fighting against all of that. But the American people are seeing the results of these victories. We're seeing you know, it in incredible job growth and economic growth. It, it's interesting because you had a tough primary with, with the president. Mm -hmm. And really, you have emerged as one of the strongest allies in advancing every part of what I would argue is his conservative agenda. And the president says it. And I think he's doing a, a, a big arena, maybe the biggest yeah. in Texas yeah. I read, uh, for you. Tell us about how that relationship has evolved in and how I know for a fact how much he's relying on you in the Senate. Yeah. Well, the president and I have worked hand in hand since, since the day he was elected. Uh, we obviously had a vigorous primary in 2016. It was hard fought, uh, but the primary is over. And, and, and as you know, the week after the general election in 2016, I got on a plane, I flew to New York City, and I spent four and a half hours with the president and his senior team. I said, Mr. President, this is an historic opportunity uh, it is rare to have control of the White House and both houses of Congress. We can't blow it. And I think the four big domestic priorities were tax cuts, regulatory reform, Obamacare, and judges. And I told him that day, I said, I want to do everything humanly possible to lead the fight in the Senate, to deliver on our promises. And I got to say, the level we're doing it is enormous. And let me just finally say to your viewers, go to tedcruz.org, tedcruz.org, tedcruz.org. We got a big fight in the Senate. We're being outraised two to one. We need your help. Well, Senator, um, I know you've been a strong conservative, a strict uh, constitutionalist all throughout your career. Um, 
in spite of what the media is praying for, I know the people of Texas appreciate what you're doing there. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, Sean. Take care.